This is the 2013 Mac Pro, or as most people affectionately call it, the trash can. Now that these once extremely expensive machines are no longer supported by the latest Mac OS, prices have cratered to the point where they're actually a pretty good value for the power. So today, let's install a rather interesting gaming-focused modern Linux on this oft-maligned tube of hubris. We'll see how it performs and try some gaming on it. And then we'll get it out on the road and give it a dunk score. Wait, that's the wrong show. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy searching for the silver linings in Apple's conspicuous failures, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. The Trashcan Mac Pro was released in late 2013 with a lot of fanfare. Phil Schiller from Apple infamously took the stage and delivered a rather PG-13 rant about Apple's ability to innovate. Well, this hubris would come back to haunt poor old Phil when, uh, oh, that's the wrong trash can. Well, that hubris would come back to haunt poor old Phil when, uh, wait a minute. Pro users were not happy about this supposedly pro Mac, which compared to the previous well-loved and expandable cheese grater tower, seemed to put form over function to such a ridiculous degree, it felt almost comical. Now, when it was new, it was pretty impressive just how much power they were able to cram into this little tube here. My base model, which started at $3,000, came with a quad-core Intel Xeon, 12 gigs of 1866 MHz DDR3 ECC SD RAM, a 256 gig SSD, and dual AMD FirePro D300 GPUs, each with two gigs of VRAM and custom designed by AMD to fit inside this tuber. And you could even configure this thing with up to 12 cores of Xeon power and 64 gigs of RAM for around $10,000. My friend Colin from This Does Not Compute actually recently did that max upgrade and compared the performance of this thing against an M1 Mac mini. And I was pretty surprised by the results. Now I do intend to upgrade the hardware in this thing, but Today, I'm interested in answering a specific question. Just how much fun can you have out of the box with one of these things today? Which is why I put a poll out on bitbang.social to ask which version of Linux I should install for the best mix of gaming and general computing. So I've decided I'm not gonna install any of those. And instead, we're gonna install a really weird version of Linux. Right after this word about today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. They build high quality standing desks, chairs, monitor arms, mounts, and all sorts of furniture. And oh boy, am I ever glad FlexiSpot found me. Because uh, <laughs> let me just show you where I've been editing most of these videos. FlexiSpot sent me a bunch of stuff that I've actually been using for the past few weeks now. This is the FlexiSpot E7 Premium Standing Desk, and there are a ton of options for leg colors and styles, different types and sizes of tops, including the gaming series, which has a special surface to work well with gaming mice. I went with the curved top here in lovely bamboo with built-in wireless charger. And just look at this control panel, lovely capacitive buttons. And just look how smoothly it goes up and down. That's dual motor smoothness. This thing is so stable, when I raise it with a glass of water on here, it doesn't even ripple. I can even shake the desk and it's fully raised. I also got FlexiSpot C7 Premium Ergonomic Chair. It has a ton of different adjustments like lumbar support and adjustable seat. FlexiSpot was also kind enough to send me some accessories to fill out my editing station here, like an adjustable monitor arm so I can finally use my behemoth of an ultra-wide monitor. So thank you so much, FlexiSpot, for this incredible furniture, and uh, it might just be the nicest furniture in my entire house. So the Linux we're installing today is called Bazite. It's technically a remix of Fedora using Universal Blue. What makes it special is that it's built with the Steam Deck in mind. Yeah, that's right one of these things. And it's billed as an alternative operating system to run on your Steam Deck instead of SteamOS. But it's also available for desktops and 
targeted for things like home theaters and home Linux gaming setups. And to that end, it has all sorts of optimizations and drivers and preloaded software already configured to make Steam games run under Proton as smoothly as possible on constrained-ish hardware. So I have here my standard setup for extremely serious builds. Of course, my hamster wireless mouse and my sort of broken Apple keyboard. And I have here on this very USB flash drive, a copy of Bazite Linux's installer ISO. Connecting USB, applying power, holding down option to hopefully get to a boot menu. And from this menu, I'll be choosing EFI boot to get into the installer. So at the grub menu, we're choosing Bazite deck. Okay, so it is several days later and originally I wanted to do like a, let's explore Bazite together and discover how good it is or how bad it is. And uh, well, I did film a whole bunch of just poking around the, the system installed on here, but I ran into a bunch of issues that I think were specific to running Bazite on the Mac Pro. And I wanted to see if I could figure out fixes for them or ways around them so that we could give Bazite a fair shake on here. And for the most part, I think I have. So I'm gonna scrap the previous footage and instead we're gonna start from installing Bazite the correct way for what we wanna do. And then I'll show you some of the fixes and workarounds to get it running as good as possible on this 2013 Mac Pro. So we'll start off here, English, and then everything that's marked in red here, we do have to make a selection for. I am gonna do a root account because we're gonna need it to do some of the fixes. And uh, yeah, we're also gonna do a user account since we're gonna need that as well. Okay, so first boot of Bazite, and this is gonna go directly into the desktop and launch Steam. So this is the Bazite portal, which you can also re-enter by clicking this icon up here. But this is gonna let us choose some stuff. We will choose some stuff here. Well, the most important thing to choose is the Nix package manager, because we'll need that to fix some stuff, and we're done. And we now have a fully functional Bazite install, although for gaming purposes, there are still some issues, but I just signed into Steam and I'm going to pair my wireless Xbox controller here. The drivers for this are already built in to Bazite, so this will just work. Yep, and we're paired. Now, if we were going to try to launch one of those games right now, unfortunately, they would run like garbage. And the reason why is right here. If we look at our video drivers, we're on the older Radeon driver for these Fire Pro D300s, but we actually want to be on the AMD GPU driver, which is the more modern driver and does actually support these video cards, even though Fedora wants to default to the old driver. Once we're on the AMD GPU driver, we'll then have Vulkan enabled, and our games should run as good as they can on these video cards, or, well, on one of the video cards, because unfortunately, they won't make use of both unless they were programmed to. But anyway, good old Arch Wiki to the rescue, and what we're going to do is follow the instructions to enable the Southern Islands support. So we're going to use a program in Fedora called Grubby. And all we have to do is add a parameter. So Grubby args equals, and then the args from the arch wiki update kernel equals all. Of course, we have to do that with sudo. <laughs> all right, sudo grubby. All right, after a successful reboot, if we check our drivers now, AMD GPU. Uh, 
However, there are still some other issues. All we have to do is edit this shortcuts properties, details, no, application, advanced options, and turn this off because I don't know what it's trying to use, maybe the other video card or something. But now it'll work. Dear friends, I believe we've built ourselves a gaming console. <laughs> oh yes, look at this. This has been my favorite game lately, Vampire Survivors, which is playing via Proton. And there we go, Proton is working. And funny enough, sound is coming out of the top of the Mac Pro here. Proton working just like as if this were a Steam Deck. And I have the curse turned all the way up on here, so that's why everything's moving extremely fast. <laughs> okay, but this is hooked up to a computer screen. We basically built a weird console here, so I think we can do better. All right, now this is gaming. And uh, I am a little bit concerned about heat, so I'm just gonna stick a USB fan on top of here to suck that hot air out of there. But yeah, check it out. We have turned this lowly Mac Pro into a full-fledged Apple gaming console. <laughs> and yeah, let's see how this does in a little bit more of a 3D game. So my absolute favorite game, the Long Dark. So we're playing at 720p, the same as a Steam Deck. And it is silky smooth. Look at this. All right, score one for our next gen Apple Pippin. Come here, dear, let's be friends. Now, unfortunately, there are some issues. We saw Proton working when we played Vampire Survivors but it seems like not every Proton game wants to work. So if I try to launch Fallout New Vegas here, it's just gonna fail. And what I've seen looking at the console while this is failing, something around Vulcan is failing to load, which is weird. So I'm wondering if it has something to do with 32-bit Vulcan versus 64-bit or 32-bit Mesa not being enabled here or whatever's installed here doesn't like the AMD GPU driver for 32-bit games. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna hang here indefinitely. Like I said, it's spitting a bunch of warnings into the console, but uh, I'm confident that this is a problem that we can fix. And this is not where we're gonna leave this project because I have all sorts of upgrades and we're gonna max this thing out. And I'll put links to everything down in the description below. And I highly recommend trying Bazite Linux out for yourself, even if you don't have a Steam Deck, just pop it onto an old PC and see how well it works. And a big thank you again to FlexiSpot for not only sponsoring this video, but helping me build out that incredible editing station. Use my special code YTB930 for special discounts. And there's a special Labor Day sale going on right now. So you'll save even more using my code. Again, YTB930. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods, Harris Brody, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Matthew Kroll, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.